recording, mixing and mastering alternative metal. We already recorded all the instruments, drums, bass, guitars and vocals, pretty basic and we ended up with 72 audio tracks. The first thing that we do is gain staging. So what I'm gonna do is to open an SSLG plugin on every channel, because that's my default. If you're familiar with my techniques, I use that for gain staging, adjusting the input gain on the channel. And now I'm gonna open one on the master because Pro Tools doesn't open it by default in there. Here on the master bus, I'm gonna open a VU meter. I like the Clang Elm and it's calibrated as you can see a minus uh, 18 dBFS so we can start our gain staging and what I usually do is I start with the kick drum So I'm hitting minus five on the VU meter. I'm gonna solo the bass as well. Now, because the three bass tracks go to the bass out, I can adjust just the gain staging of the bass out. So we'll start the minus 18 and we go up uh, looking at the VU meter. When the kick drum and the bass play together, I want to read minus two on the VU meter. That also gives me uh, an overall decent balance between kick and bass. So now we can start opening up the other elements. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a somewhat balanced mix already with the correct gain staging. So with all the elements playing together, as you see, I haven't touched the faders at all and I want to have bass, drum and guitars somewhat at the level in which I'm gonna put them in the final mix. So we are good for now. We have headroom on the two bus and we have the three main elements going. So now we can start editing. Uh, we will start with the drum and actually I've already done most of the editing of the drum because like I said, it is boring, but I left the last part so I can show you what I did. As you can see, my tracks are now pink. The reason why is because I had multiple playlists for, for the drums. So you can see here for each track, kick in, I have four playlists, same for kick out, same for all the other drum tracks. So I grouped the drum, okay? So when I cut and paste anything on one track, it will cut and paste and move uh, the clips on the other tracks too, okay? So you can see my groups here, drums. Instead of using Beat Detective on one performance and force it to the grid, which I don't really like, I picked and choose different parts, different clips from different performances. And so we have a comped uh, drum here uh, made of all the playlists. And basically I haven't used um, Beat Detective at all. I did, as you can see, a, a little bit of manual adjustment is not perfectly on grid, but it also is human. Next up is to clean up tom tracks and to bus, kick in and kick out on their summing bus and then snare top, bottom and side to their uh, summing bus as well so I can treat those tracks respectively as one instrument, so kick and snare and not uh, dealing with each individual track. So I already started editing the tom, but I wanna show you guys what I'm doing so the tom the rock tom is pretty well isolated actually so what we are gonna do is as you can see I am I will show you in a minute I'm tab transient again to the transient of tom cutting and then open it up a bit because I will need it to fade I will do the fades later and then mute the clip that I don't need the part where there's nothing but uh, bleed from the other parts of the drum. So now that I cleaned up the tom tracks, as you can see, and also the hi-hat track, because it was literally six hits on, a, on the hi-hat for this song, and I bust kick in and kick out to their respective uh, summing bus and the snare, the three snares, top, bottom, and side, to again the summing bus. I did also a little bit of processing, so let me solo 
the snares for you. So I applied a gate first and then basic EQ, as you can see here, then my main compressor, which is the arouser, and then a lo-fi, just to add a little bit of grit. The kick drum sounds like this, no processing at all, just a little bit of filtering, I think. We have hover adds, a little bit of filtering there too. I also took the trash mic and did some processing there too, a little bit of limiting because you can see these spikes when the compressor, we recorded this one through an 1176. So there are those uh, sporadic spikes that I want to take care of, otherwise they will hit a lot of headroom. And for now, I added a reverb to it. So I want to use the trash mic as an ambient mic. But now that I have my drums, I feel like I definitely need samples for the genre for the song. Especially the kick drum does not have uh, the click that I want, doesn't have the tone that I want, and the snare too. So I'm gonna use two of my favorite plugins to replace uh, kick and snare drums in general. One is gonna be Superior Drum, and the other one is gonna be Perfect Drum by Naughty Seal Audio. Uh, I'm gonna use Superior Drummer first, to actually turn the audio into MIDI and then trigger both Superior and Perfect Drums. So I picked a couple of samples from Superior Drummer 3 and Perfect Drum. Uh, I'm still experimenting with what is gonna be the final sound for kick and snare, which are arguably the two, two of the most important elements in a mix like this for me. So now we select which samples we want to use, what is gonna be the final sound for this drum. Let's actually take a look at what I did for the mix, for the drum mix, uh, which I don't, I don't know if it's gonna be like the final mix in the song, but at this point, uh, I feel like confident that it's more likely gonna be this one. So uh, let's see, first channel, we have the ambient room from Superior Drummer 3. You can see I just used the SSL channel. I did everything here with this one. Low cut and removing quite some 10 dB, actually, around 250, 260. I'm actually gonna go eight. I want it a little more beefier than this. Then after it, there's the dry uh, snare from uh, Perfect Drum, which sounds like this, it has some sense which we will see in a minute but raw it sounds like this i used the stock eq to brighten it up and remove something a couple of db at 200. this alone opens up uh, the whole drum bus, the whole song. After that, we have Pro-Q3, again, reshaping the high end, which is tricky uh, because we have a lot of guitars. So you can see that push-pull that I did here, uh, a, a boost of almost 7 dB at 7K and a cut of um, 4 dB at 11K. Okay, with the low cut because we don't need all that low end uh, below 70 and we don't have tracks interaction, okay? So this is a sample, it's not part of the original drum. So I can high pass it, no problem, because it has no interaction with the other tracks really. So uh, let's keep going with the perfect drum snare. After Pro-Q3, we have the harmonic maximizer. Again, uh, you will see me use this 
uh, more in this mix, but it's such a great plugin. So this is basically a multiband parametric um, saturator. I didn't touch the uh, single EQ uh, knobs because I like the tone of this of the snare. Like I said, the better the better the samples, the original samples, the less work I have to do in mixing. So I just use the drive at 52% and a little bit of push. Okay, brings it to life. Uh, after this, the snare goes to the snare parallel channel, which I'm not sure I used. Oh, actually I did. We will see that later is here. So after all my drum tracks, there's my uh, snare kick ambient track, which is an aux, snare parallel track, an aux again, which needs to be sent to the drums actually, and the kick sum, so all our original kicks, kick in and kick out, and then the snare original bus. So after this, I sent the snare to the parallel channel, which we'll see then. Uh, um, for now, I'm not sending to the ambient. I'm sending it to the snare snap. So what I wanted by listening again, the drum as a whole and all instruments together was that I needed more attack on the snare. So I put, I send it to an aux, this snare snap track. I put a transient designer in it, in this case, Mac attack from waves. And I removed all the sustain. You can see that. So let me see if I can solo it. Okay, without it would be a copy of our of our snare track. But I removed all the sustain, so I only have the attack of it. The kick drum, the dry, um, perfect drum sample kick drum. So this is how it sound without anything on it. There's uh, API 2500, one of my favorite. Tighten it up quite a lot, actually, especially the low end. And then lo-fi, just to add some harmonic content to it. There's a level boost, uh, unavoidable, because we don't have a compensation output here. And then after that, an EQ, stock EQ. As you can see, I'm compensating by 6 dB, uh, lowering the output to compensate for the level rise on the lo-fi. Even if it's lower in the level, it sounds better. After that, again, a little more color to the kick drum with just the drive from Psy EQ. This is just a little bit of a harmonic distortion. Okay, so just to give an example, let me play the whole mix and I will bypass all my insert on the, on the kick drum. Uh, for the rack toms, I used the original toms as well, and I did basic filtering. Let's solo them. They were pretty much well recorded, so I didn't I didn't need to do much. If you remember the microphones we used, um, I think they were Electro Voice. They isolated the tom really well. There's very little bleed from snare and cymbals. Same for these other. This one needed a little more boost and a little more cut in the 400 range. I wasn't a fan of this microphone, this recording. The rock tom sounded better, but again, before doing anything to that, I wanted to add the sample, which I did these 
are the samples. Which sound pretty good. Again, good selection of samples will make the mix easier. Okay, and here I'll probably do some processing. Um, I'll probably gonna add some sort of saturation or clipping. I will go for true iron. Let's see how this sounds on him. Let me try something else before deciding this is gonna be it. Let's keep in the harmonic and see what we have. I have a new one that I really, really love, which is the abuser. It gets a little dirty uh, for some reason, this one on, on, this particular, on this particular track. So let me try something else. One thing that I like old school, but it works is the classic clipper. Let's go for unity gain again. Yeah, let's try to add iron now. Definitely love it. So I'll back off this one a little bit. And actually, I can even go, let's say, 5.8. And you can see I'm keeping the slope hard because I only want the uh, clipper to affect the very peaks, not the tail of the, um, especially toms, sounds not that great. And see how they sound with the drum. Try 1 dB. Yeah, they sound okay. And let me try to add a little bit of really deep low end to it. And if you follow me, you know my trick for the clean focus low end is always the SSL. Good, and actually we have way more uh, snap and attack that we we can possibly ask for these toms. They're they're really good. Uh, I like I like them. So right now I'm thinking I can use a little bit of kick drum, like just level. So I'm just gonna boost this one, one dB, and see how I feel about it. Okay, even a little bit of high end doesn't hurt because right now the guitars are very loud. I like them loud. Uh, I also like drums loud. So we'll see. Let's try minus 5.5. Okay, I like it. I might want to add a little low end. In this case for the snare, I don't like to go where the fundamental is because that's already uh, peak level wise already high. So I like to move it like slightly behind it when you know maybe the the, the lower harmonic is and boost that one instead. So in this case, I feel okay around 140. Stays like that for now. Another thing that I did on the snare is pretty important is the snare parallel channel.
This is pretty simple. I sent to the parallel snare drum. I also sent the kick drum because this is something that I usually do with my distressor, like a mono channel with kick, snare, and toms. Now the toms in this case are super powerful. I don't need any parallel into those, but kick and snare are never enough, especially with this big guitar. So I send my snare, the PD, the, the perf perfect uh, drum sample snare, and the kick drum to both, to the parallel snare. The parallel snare is a simple aux tracks here, which sees Devil Lock by Sound Toys and a little bit of EQ. Okay, so it adds that ring to the snare, which is already in the sample, uh, but I really like it. The last thing on the drums, which I'm not sure in what quantity I'm gonna use, is this. So I sent the kick drum and the snare again to another bus, which is called snare and kick ambience. Okay, it's this one. I'm filtering everything you can see, going in my reverb, my TC electronic that you can see here, DVR250, amazing <laughs> unit. Recreation of the vintage EMT250 reverb sounds absolutely great. This is how it's set up right now.